this is Alex with Under the Water Design and welcome into my studio. I recently purchased an entire tree of bass stone walnut, locally grown, locally harvested, and locally milled by a really good friend of mine. This particular tree was, was simply incredible. The figure, the color, everything about this tree was amazing, but it had something really special. It had one of the most intense graph lines that I've ever seen, and that's what it looked like. Now I'm gonna do everything I can in order to preserve that beautiful graph line and present it in a way that makes these stools look incredible and blows my client's mind. I have all the legs down to dimension now. So legs are dimensioned, rails and the stretchers are dimensioned, and I'm pretty much ready for joinery. The bass stone walnut, some of these trees are just crazy, and I mean this is one of those trees. The interlocking grain is just out of control, and it's really, it just really takes a beating, even with the helical heads on the joiner and the planer which means there's probably gonna be a lot of card scraping on the kind of final phase of all this, which is fine, but it's just more work, but it's fine. So I'm gonna move on and get joinery going, get all this dry fitted, and then uh, get everything kind of final fitted for the seats, which I just got in today. So it's go time. I finished all the mortises and now I'm onto the tenons. One of the challenging parts when you're working with legs that are, in my case, these legs are an inch and a half. Doesn't matter where you put the mortise, the tenons themselves, they're gonna run into each other. And it's not necessarily very prudent from a strength standpoint to have one long tenon and one short tenon. That way one can go long one direction and then uh, the other one can be short and bump into it. You wanna maximize the depth of both tenons and that is just to uh, combat twisting, right? So in this particular case, as each of these tenons go into their respective side of the leg, they will uh, overlap each other like this, maximizing the depth into a channel that I've cut on this side. And then same with this side, we'll go in. So we're gonna be able to maximize the strength and the twisting and have uh, a really elegant solution to maximize strength. I had mentioned earlier that I was really nervous about this Bastogne walnut. The, the interlocking grain is just, it's absolutely crazy. It's just one of those things I just really wasn't sure how it was going to play, if I was going to have to do a ton of sanding and card scraping, but it has taken the plain iron beautifully. Now I've gone through and sharpened my plain iron to crazy sharp. I mean scary sharp, so sharp that if you even think about it, it'll cut you in half. I put a lot of thought into the design and functionality of these stools. There were a couple things that I needed to overcome. Number one, I needed to match the ruggedness of the home itself. And then number two, I needed to also match the elegance of the home. And sometimes blending those two elements together can be a little tricky. The rugged side, I overcame this by building a boxier frame and using the overlapping joinery that you saw earlier. The elegant side of it is where I fell on my personal just affinity for mid-century modern design and reworked the seat itself so that the legs and the end grain of the legs specifically would come up and be parallel with the top of the seat kind of showing off that end grain and giving the stool itself a really unique look. First coat of finish is on and we are looking pretty nice. With the second coat of oil going on, 
The Bastogne Walnut was really starting to pop and I could focus now on the seats themselves. I had a very specific vision for these seats when I designed this piece of furniture. First and foremost, think Ferrari, Maserati, Lamborghini, slick black seats, no stitching, no seams, no creases, perfectly working around any round edge. And as you can see, they turned out absolutely perfect. This was such a fantastic build and you should see what these tools look like in my client's home. And you know what? I'm going to show you that right now. But first, please take a moment, hit subscribe. I really appreciate the support and uh, I'm looking forward to what's coming next. See you soon.